Adam Weishaupt. With deceit as their chief weapon, those who direct the Luciferian conspiracy have caused Catholics to believe Freemasonry to be the main instrument the devil uses to destroy them and Christianity. Using exactly the same deception Masons are taught to believe Roman Catholicism is Luciferianism in disguise. By the same token Communists are taught they are the champions of democracy while the people of the so-called remaining democratic nations are being convinced communism is the root of all evil and the main threat towards the destruction of their governments and religions. Thus those who direct the Luciferian conspiracy cap the Goyim divided among themselves. They shift the blame for their own sins against God and their crimes against humanity and place it where they find it most convenient in a most remarkable manner, which can only be explained by the power of the devil, they manage to deflect towards others the finger of suspicion whenever it is pointed at them and, generally speaking, they preserve the secrecy of their motives and identity. The synagogue of Satan directs the Luciferian conspiracy. History proves the SOS has used all internationalist movements organized since the beginning of time to further their own secret plans. The Bible tells us the idea of a one world government was introduced to Solomon ten centuries before Christ was born. As happened to Nazism, all international movements are made to destroy themselves as soon as they have served the Luciferian cause. Thus it is that the few who direct the world revolutionary movement move peacefully nearer to establishing a totalitarian state. They make those they plot to subjugate, fight, and destroy each other, their governments, and religions because they stand as obstacles in their path. The protocols are the original draft of the plan by which the synagogue of Satan intend to obtain undisputed world domination. The protocols are, as the saying goes, as old as the his. Weishaupt simply revised and modernized them in order that those who comprise the synagogue of Satan may take full advantage of rapidly changing conditions, and the advances being made by applied science. The manner in which the discovery of atomic energy is being used to frighten the masses into accepting the idea that a one world government is the only solution to the world's many problems is typical of what I mean. Those who direct the conspiracy carefully conceal, from those they use to serve their devilish purpose, the fact that in the final stage of the conspiracy they intend to usurp the powers of the first world government to be established, and then impose the Luciferian ideology upon what remains of the human race. Once one-worlders are enlightened in this regard, they will reject internationalism in any form. Weishaupt organized the Illuminati to put his revised version of the conspiracy into effect. He also established the lodges of Grand Orient Masonry to be the secret headquarters of the Illuminati. When members of the Illuminati infiltrated into other secret organizations, including Continental or Blue Freemasonry, they organized their own secret society within the lodges of the secret society into which they infiltrated. The ordinary, imperfect, members were, and still are, kept in ignorance of this fact. The most prominent Satanists, or Luciferians, who worked with Weishaupt were the famous German authors Wach, Baron Nig, Baron Basus I and S A N D E R F G O R F, the Marquis Constanza and Nikolai. In order to hide their identity and real purpose, Weishaupt and his lieutenants used code names.20. Weishaupt was Spartacus, Zwak was Cato, Baron Nig was Philo, Basus was Hannibal, the Marquis Constanza was Diomedes, and Nikolai the greatest scoffer of all religions which teach belief in a god other than Lucifer, became Lucian cities in which Grand Orient lodges were established to be the secret revolutionary headquarters of those who directed the conspiracy also received code names. Thus Munich became Athens, Vienna became Rome, 
etc. It was an accident, or an act of God which exposed these secrets. Zwak had put Weishaupt's notes into orderly manuscript form ready for publication for the information of revolutionary leaders throughout the world. Copies of this Luciferian Bible were placed in the hands of carefully selected trustees to ensure that some would survive if government authorities seized other copies. One copy was entrusted to the care of Professor John Robison of Edinburgh University. In 1784, another copy was sent from Frankfurt on Main in Germany to Mirabeau in Paris, France. He had been selected by Weishaupt to foment the French Revolution scheduled to break out in 1789. Very few historians seem to realize that early in the 1700s, long before Weishaupt was retained, by the newly formed House of Rothschild, to revise and modernize the age-old conspiracy to bring about a one-world government, the so-called internationalists had infiltrated into America. The works of those historians who do mention this fact have been suppressed. There is documentary evidence which proves these subversives were active as early as 1746. They celebrated May 1st. 1776 as the day on which Weishaupt finished the revision of the age-old conspiracy and gave the name Illuminati to those selected to direct the conspiracy and put his revised plans into effect. Millions upon millions of people have celebrated May Day ever since. 20. This practice continues to the present day as we proved in the story of the secret meetings held on Jekyll Island and St. Simon Island, published in Pawns in the Game, and the Red Fog over America. Page 50 Satan, Prince of this World Thinking It the anniversary of the day America and labor gained independence. The masses, Goyim, never dreamed May 1st, 1776 was an epoch-making day in the history of the Luciferian conspiracy which we refer to as the World Revolutionary Movement. It was the day Illuminati stabbed Britain in the back as part of their program to ultimately destroy the British Empire together with all other remaining governments and religions. May Day had been celebrated by the Roman Catholic Church for centuries as the feast day of the Mother of Jesus Christ. It was for this reason that Weishaupt, a renegade Jesuit, picked it to announce to his fellow Satanists and Luciferians his revised plan to destroy Christianity and bring about what Nietzsche afterwards referred to as the death of God. But to get back to our story, as the Illuminatus courier rode through the town of Ratisbon, on his way to Paris to deliver Mirabeau his copy of Weishaupt's revised plans, the courier was killed by a stroke of lightning. This event occurred in 1784. The police turned the documents found on the body over to Bavarian government authorities. Examination revealed them to be the protocols of the order and sect of the Illuminati. The word protocol means a copy of the original draft of a plan to achieve a definite purpose and reach a clearly defined goal. The Bavarian government had got hold of the protocols of the Luciferian conspiracy as revised by Adam Weishaupt between 1770 and 1776. They knew how Weishaupt intended to use the order and sect of the Illuminati to put his modernized plans into effect. The documents further disclosed that the lodges of the Grand Orient were to be used as the secret headquarters of those who directed the conspiracy to destroy all remaining governments and religions throughout the world. They also revealed that the Illuminati intended to infiltrate into all other secret societies, but particularly into continental, blue, Freemasonry, for the purpose of contacting wealthy and influential people over whom they wish to obtain control so they could be used to further the Illuminatus secret plans to bring about a one-world government. The Elector of Bavaria ordered the police to raid the homes and meeting places of Weishaupt and his close associates. 
these raids added a wealth of additional evidence to what had already been obtained from the documents found on the body of the courier. The Bavarian government was very thorough. By 1786 they'd had examined all available evidence. They published the information in a book entitled, in English translation, Original Writings of the Order and Sect of the Illuminati. Zwak's manuscript containing Weishaupt's revised version of the age-old Luciferian conspiracy was entitled Einig Original Schriften. Copies of the conspiracy were sent by the Bavarian government to all heads of church and state in Europe. History proves these warnings were ignored because Weishaupt's Illuminati had already been placed in key positions behind the scenes of government, both secular and religious, as experts and advisors. They denounced the evidence as a forgery. They claimed it was part of a huge practical joke being perpetrated by those who wished to ridicule the heads of church and state. But the French Revolution broke out on schedule, and history proves that the conspiracy has been developed since 1776 exactly as Weishaupt intended. Today, it is in its semi-final stage. The Elector of Bavaria banished Weishaupt. He lost his chair in Ingolstadt University where he taught canon law. He moved to Regensburg, Switzerland where he reorganized his Illuminati. Switzerland was made into a neutral nation and remained the headquarters of the directors of the World Revolutionary Movement until the United Nations organization was set up by the Rockefellers in New York. Then the brains, which work out the program to bring the conspiracy to its ultimate goal, moved into the Harold Pratt Building, New York. Two Italians, the Marquis Constanza and the Marquis Savio Lee joined Weishaupt in Switzerland. This explains why the Italian Giuseppe Mazzini was selected to direct the World Revolutionary Program in 1834 and was succeeded by another Italian, Adriano Lamy, in 1872 when Mazzini died. With devilish cunning Weishaupt and his fellow conspirators made those in authority believe that the Illuminati had died a natural death in 1786. The truth is the plot to bring what remains of the human race under a totalitarian dictatorship has never ended. It blossomed forth under new names and disguises in all parts of the world. It is the WRM as we know it today. Weishaupt himself tells us he planned well in advance of 1786 how to take care of the risk of possible discovery and exposure. Those who defect from God, aid and I, first become Satanists, then after long years of testing and trial, a few Satanists are selected for the initiation into the Luciferian priesthood. From these are selected the High Priests and the Universal Sovereign Pontiff of the Luciferian Creed. Weishaupt, Spartacus, aspired to become Sovereign Pontiff. In a letter he wrote, Cato Zwak, dated February 6, 1778, he said, The allegory on which I am to found the mysteries of the higher orders is, the fire worship of the Magi, worship of Lucifer. We must have some worship and none is so apposite, let there be light. This is my motto, and this is my fundamental principle. Page 51 Satan, Prince of this world in March the same year, Weishaupt again wrote to his friend, Cato Zwak. He said, I have gone through the whole circle of human inquiry. I have exorcised spirits. Too on, I raised ghosts discovered treasures. Interrogate the cabale. 22 I have never transmuted metals. I would have executed much greater things had not the government, his superiors in the Luciferian conspiracy at the time always opposed my exertions and placed others in situations which suited my talents. Weishaupt was literally as proud as Lucifer. He was determined to become the sovereign pontiff of the Luciferian creed. He was determined to be placed higher than any other person in this or the celestial world, excepting only his beloved Lucifer. 
This statement is proved by a letter he wrote, Cato Zwak, in 1778. He told his friend, By this plan we shall direct all mankind. In this manner, and by the simplest means, we shall set all in motion and in flames. The occupations must be so allotted and contrived, that we may, in secret, influence all political transactions. I have considered everything, and so prepared it, that if the order should this day go to ruin, I shall in a year re-establish it more brilliant than ever. There we have the key to the secret. The Bavarian government discovered and exposed the existence of the continuing conspiracy, but Weishaupt built it up and made it stronger than ever. All the Bavarian government actually did was prune the tree of evil and make it grow stronger. What they should have done was dig it up by the roots and burn it as the holy scriptures tell us we must do if we wish to destroy the spiritual forces of darkness who roam about this world seeking the destruction of souls. Matt. 7. 1524. If the heads of church and state had in 1786 followed the advice of the scriptures and cut down and burned the evil tree, of which the Illuminati is only one of many branches, the womb would have forgot him, Weishaupt, the worm would have fed sweetly on him, he would be no more remembered, and wickedness would have been broken as an evil tree. Job 2420 Before Weishaupt was banished in 1786, his 2000 well-educated, carefully selected, brilliant-minded, Wealthy and well-bred Illuminus had established one or more lodges of the Grand Orient in Munich, Ingolstadt, Frankfurt, Axstadt, Hanover, Brunswick, Kalbi, Magburg, Kassel, Osnabrück, Weimar, Saxony, Heidelberg, Mannheim, Strasbourg, Spire, Worms, Dusseldorf F, Cologne, Bonn, Livonia, Cortland, Fronendal, Wiener, Dupunts, Hus, Kalsel, Buchenwerder, Treves, Montpellier, aix la chapelle Stuttgart, Barschied, Karlsruhe, Herrenburg, Anspach, Neuaid, Menz, Rome, Naples, Ancona, Turin, Florence, Warsaw, and Dresden. There were lodges in Upper Saxony, Westphalis, Switzerland, France, Scotland, Holland, and last but by no means least, America. Many, so-called, authorities have, since 1786, tried to convince the heads of church and state in America and elsewhere that Illuminism is dead as the dodo bird. These Luciferians produce what they claim is documentary evidence to prove what they say is the truth, but they are careful to conceal the evidence which proves that Albert Pike reorganized the Polydian Rite between 1859 and 1889 to take over the direction of the Luciferian conspiracy from the Illuminati. They carefully conceal the evidence which proves that Illuminism began to stink in the nostrils of honest Americans. In the early 1800s 45,000 Scottish Rite Masons handed in their charters in protest against the manner Illuminism had infiltrated into their lodges. This it is that few Americans know that Pike established 26 councils, triangles of this new and reformed Polydian Rite in every large city throughout the world to direct the Luciferian conspiracy as Weishaupt intended. We explain how this plot worked in another chapter. We mentioned that Professor John Robeson of Edinburgh University was one of those entrusted with the copy of Zwack's original manuscripts dealing with Weishaupt's revised and modernized version of the age-old Luciferian conspiracy. Robeson was a 33rd degree member of the Scottish Rite of Freemasonry. As such he visited most Masonic lodges in European cities and took part in their rituals and initiations. He taught natural philosophy at Edinburgh University. He was secretary of the Royal Society. 
Weishaupt had been particularly anxious to obtain Robeson's cooperation so that the idea of a one-world government could be introduced into all educational institutions. This objective has since been achieved as any parent of children of school age must 21 the word exorcised means to expel a devil or devils from a person who has been possessed. The scriptures tell us how Christ cast out devils. But Satanists invite devils to enter into and possess their mediums and through them to speak to those who seek knowledge or advice from Satan and or Lucifer. After the medium has served their purpose, the high priests of the synagogue of Satan then exorcised the devils from that person's body, and he or she becomes normal again. It is this practice which caused the synagogue of Satan which wished to discredit Christ, to accuse him of casting out devils in the name, and through the powers of Beelzebub the prince of devils and not by the power of God. Luke 11 14 minus 15 22 the cabal, often spelled differently as referred to by Weishaupt means the spiritual powers headed by Lucifer in the celestial world. The holy scriptures refer to them as the spiritual powers of darkness. Human beings who direct the Luciferian cause often consult their spiritual directors in the celestial world in exactly the same way as millions of Christians believe in the communion of the saints and pray to them to intercede with God on their behalf for spiritual insight and blessings. Mackenzie King while Prime Minister of Canada repeatedly tried to obtain advice and guidance from people who had already departed from this life. Pike is on record as having done so repeatedly also. The best recorded instance is his own report of the seance he personally conducted in St. Louis as reported elsewhere. Thus we see that truth is much stranger than any fiction ever written. Page 52 Satan Prince of this world admit. Weishaupt ordered his aluminus to wine and dine Robeson, and introduced him into the best European educational circles. He was flattered and hailed as one of the greatest educationalists of his time. But all the wiles and guiles of the devil's servants didn't deceive John Robeson. He recognized that behind the Illuminati's clever presentation that a one-world government could solve all our political, social, economic, and religious problems, the real intention of those who control the Illuminati at the very top was to usurp the power of the first world government to be established and then impose a totalitarian Luciferian dictatorship upon what remained of the human race. After the heads of church and state refused to heed the warnings given to them by the Bavarian government in 1786, and the French Revolution broke out as scheduled in 1789, John Robeson published all the knowledge he had obtained regarding the Illuminati, and those who controlled it at the top, in a book containing 548 pages. It is entitled Proofs of a Conspiracy Against All Religions and Governments of Europe. On the front cover is the additional information, carried on in the secret meetings of Freemasons, Illuminati, and Reading Societies. Copies of this book are still in existence despite the frantic efforts of those who direct the conspiracy to try to destroy all that were published. I have the written statement of a friend who owns a copy that agents of the Rockefeller Foundation told him he could name his own price for his copy. He rejected the offer. Another authentic source of information is M. Baru, who wrote Memoirs of Jacobism. This is a companion piece to proofs of a conspiracy. As I mentioned in Pawns in the Game, Sir Walter Scott also published two volumes on the subject under the title Life of Napoleon, both of which have been suppressed. This great work is not even listed by most libraries as being one of his works. But again an accident, an act of God, enabled a friend of mine to obtain original copies of both volumes from a second-hand book dealer in the USA for the ridiculous price of $17.50. Thinking I had these rare books in my personal possession, 
and intended to use them for reference while writing this book, thieves robbed me of all the books and papers I did have with me the very first night I arrived in Clearwater, Florida, November 1957 to start writing this book. It was a serious setback. It delayed my work a year, but it hasn't stopped me. In order that good Christian people may be alerted to the depths of deception used by Agent Euro of the SOS, we will quote the statement contained in a letter Weishaupt wrote to Philo, Nig. We must win, control over, the common people in every corner. This will be obtained chiefly by means of the schools. In like manner, we must try to obtain and influence the military academies, the printing houses, booksellers, shops, chapters, and in short, in all offices or even in directing the mind of the man. Painting and engraving are highly worth our care. There, the Illuminatus' first task and immediate aim is to get the possession of riches, power, and influence without industry, and to accomplish this, they want to abolish Christianity, and then dissolute manners and universal profligacy will procure them the adherence of all the wicked, and enable them to overturn all civil governments of Europe, after which they will think of further conquests, and extend their operations to the other quarters of the globe, until they have reduced mankind to one indistinguishable chaotic mass in order to reach the type of people the Illuminati needed to further their own secret plans. Weishaupt organized an apprentice class for those the Illuminatus recruiters interested in internationalism. This apprentice state was called the Minor Vallis. These were introduced to and brought under the influence of the 22 United Brethren. On the surface this was a kind of writer's club exactly the same as are to be found in all large cities and organized communities today. Out of them came the Reading Societies. These led the minds of members into channels of thought which convinced them there is real merit in the idea of a one-world government. The same thing is being done today to confirm the public's belief in the value of a one-world government and the universal brotherhood of man. The United Nations organization is nothing more or less than a deceptive front, dressed in an air of respectability, to cover the activities of those who plan to usurp the powers of the first world government to be established. The 22 United Brethren told Minor Vallis, we have united in order to accomplish the aim of the exalted founder of Christianity, viz. the enlightening of mankind, and the dethronement of superstition and fanaticism, by means of a secret fraternization of all who love the work of God. The stating of this apparently idealistic purpose was proved to be a deliberate action when some of both Weishaupt's and Pike's secret correspondence fell into hands other than intended. This correspondence proves that when the Luciferians say they wish to serve the exalted founder of Christianity, they have their tongue in their cheek. What they really mean is that they serve Lucifer. Pike told the heads of the councils of the Polydian Rite that they were to use the words, We worship God when addressing the masses, despite the fact, We worship Lucifer. This angle of the conspiracy is dealt with elsewhere. Many outstanding students, professional men, particular lawyers and civil servants in the higher levels of government, were deceived into allowing themselves to be initiated as minor vowels. Thus, as initiate they were placed in a position which required taking an oath and swearing that under pain of death they would never reveal anything with which they became acquainted as the result of their induction into the secret society. Why any person who intends to love and serve God would take a solemn oath not to divulge information about matters of which he has no personal knowledge is beyond comprehension. Why any sincere Christian, page 53 Satan, prince of this world would want to join a secret society and work in the dark, behind the scenes, instead of in the open, 
spreading the light of truth as revealed by Jesus Christ, is also difficult to understand, but just about one out of every dozen adult males belong to a Freemasonry while nearly as many belong to other secret societies. The scriptures warn us that we must not hide our light under a bushel. People who are honest and sincere and have no ulterior motives, don't go underground they stand up to be counted and take the consequences, knowing the worst the agents of Lucifer can do is kill their bodies. Matt 10 28 Luke 12 4 The truth, as revealed by secret documents, is that minor Vallis, who proved they had high moral principles and were incorruptible, were accepted into the secret society and commended for their fine ideals. But only those who were proved to be immoral, and open to bribery and or corruption, were advanced to the higher degrees. The good were used as do-gooders, reformers and other types of tools. Those who had sold their souls to the devil were used as instruments of destruction. This explains why so many clergymen are deceived into becoming tools of the devil without realizing they are serving the Luciferian cause. If those who direct the Luciferian conspiracy at the top can get the majority of those they persuade to join secret societies and social and service clubs to accept the idea that nationalism is outmoded and Christianity weak and poorly led, they have achieved their purpose. Their agent you're within the societies and clubs then suggest that nationalism leads us into wars and causes revolutions. They suggest that Christianity has proved ineffective and unable to prevent these wars and revolutions. The secret agents then promote the idea that a one world government, via the United Nations organization, and the one world religion could solve the many and varied problems bedeviling the human race today. What the agent Ur of the synagogue of Satan keep carefully concealed is the fact that their masters are ready, and fully prepared, to usurp the powers of the first world government to be established exactly as they usurp power in Russia in October 1917. After they usurp power they will impose the Luciferian ideology upon mankind by use of satanic despotism to enforce their will and destroy all secret societies all religions, and all who oppose their will as is so clearly set forth in the Protocols. Page 54 Satan, Prince of this World